Have you ever wondered what happens to all the dirty water after it leaves your home or business? Once water goes down the drain or the toilet, it becomes wastewater. Homes and businesses produce wastewater. When wastewater goes down the drain, it begins its journey through the City of Rochester sewer collection system on its way to the water reclamation plant. The city's collection system has over 500 miles of underground pipes and four lift stations to convey the wastewater. Wastewater in the pipes flows with the use of gravity. In spots where the pipes are too deep, the water is lifted to higher elevations using a lift station so that gravity takes over again. Sometimes the underground pipes can get clogged from items that get flushed down the toilet or washed down the drain. A dedicated staff of 14 individuals are responsible for maintaining the sanitary sewer system. This includes routine maintenance and response to clogged pipes. Clogged pipes can stop the wastewater before it gets to the reclamation plant, causing it to back up into buildings, streets, or even your home. Here you can see some examples of fats, oils, and grease, or fog, that had to be cleaned from the system. So remember, only flush the three P's, poop, pee, and toilet paper, and all wipes, food scraps, fog, trash, and anything else should go in the trash bin. On average, 11 million gallons of wastewater makes its way to the water reclamation plant every day, which is equivalent to 16 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Once the wastewater reaches the water reclamation plant, it is cleaned in four stages, preliminary, primary, secondary, and disinfection. Preliminary treatment starts by removing large items to protect downstream equipment from being clogged or damaged. Mechanical fine screens consist of metal sheets with holes the size of a pea to allow wastewater to pass through but any material larger than a pea is captured and removed. Materials typically include rags, personal hygiene products, toys, and larger pieces of food. The large items from the screens are washed, compacted, and bagged prior to disposal to minimize any odors. The wastewater then enters a vortex grit basin where smaller but heavier particles like sand, stones, coffee grounds, and seeds are removed. The captured grit is washed and compacted prior to disposal at the Olmsted County Landfill. The wastewater then flows into the primary treatment stage of the process. It starts with the primary clarifiers where the flow is slowed down to remove floating and settleable solids. The collector bridge assists in removing the solids that either settle or float. The settled solids, called primary sludge, is collected and pumped to the solids treatment portion of the facility to receive further treatment. Floatable materials like fats, oils, and grease is called scum. This material is skimmed off of the surface of the clarifiers and then sent directly to the digesters. The wastewater has now had most of the solids removed, but there are still many dissolved pollutants. So the wastewater is sent to aeration basins where a different approach is used. Secondary treatment uses large tanks with microorganisms and oxygen to break down organic matter, remove excess nutrients, and remove most of the remaining solids and contaminants. On average, the total weight of all the microorganisms in the tanks is equivalent to the weight of 10 elephants. Once the pollutants have been removed, the wastewater, which is now filled with microorganisms, travel through a splitter box to the final clarifiers. The clarifiers separate the microorganisms that helped clean the wastewater. The microorganisms sink to the bottom where they are returned to the aeration basins while the treated water comes to the surface. Treated water cascades over the clarifier weirs on its way to the disinfection stage. Disinfection is the final step in the process. Disinfection utilizes chlorine to kill any remaining disease-causing organisms, which we call pathogens. 
The chlorine is then removed from the water so that it does not kill any aquatic life in the river. The treatment process is now complete for the reclaimed water, and some of the treated water is reused within the plant for different processes. But the majority of it is discharged to the south fork of the Zumbro River. By the time the reclaimed water reaches the environment, it meets the state of Minnesota's strict environmental standards designed to protect aquatic life and everyone that wants to use the water for recreational, industrial, or agricultural purposes. Now let's learn what happens to the solids portion of the treatment process. The solids, scum, and excess microorganisms generated throughout the treatment process are sent to our solids handling portion of the facility for further treatment. The combined material is called sludge. The process starts at the gravity belt thickeners, which is similar to a conveyor belt where a polymer is added to the sludge, allowing water to drain from the sludge using gravity. The belt the sludge sits on contains small holes that allows the water to pass through. The thickened sludge falls into a collection basin and is pumped to anaerobic digesters. The primary purpose of thickening sludge is to reduce the volume, which reduces the downstream pumps, piping, and tankage that is needed. Anaerobic digestion uses another set of microorganisms to break down or digest the sludge without any oxygen. This is a stabilization process which reduces the volume and makes the product safe for use as an agricultural fertilizer. A byproduct of this process is biogas, which can be used as renewable fuel. The city uses a practice called co-digestion which combines multiple organic materials and adds them to the digesters to boost biogas production. Co-digestion turns otherwise undesirable organic waste into a valuable fuel resource. After this process, the sludge has been transformed into a product called biosolids. The biogas from the anaerobic digestion is collected and stored before it is used to make heat and electricity within the plant. Biogas provides a clean, renewable, and reliable source of fuel in place of coal or natural gas. It allows us to reduce energy costs and reduce the energy strain on the city's energy grid. Use of biogas produces approximately 40% of the electricity needed to run the plant and is the primary source of heat in cooler months. The biosolids generated in the digesters is sent to another gravity belt thickener to again reduce the volume before being stored in large tanks until it can be used as a fertilizer. The city partners with local farmers to land apply approximately 10 million gallons of biosolids to agricultural fields. Another important part of this work is dealing with the smell. As the city expanded and developed around the water reclamation plant, odor control became a priority. Many of the treatment processes are covered, so odor-causing gases can be collected and neutralized through our odor scrubbing equipment before being released into the environment. Sampling the wastewater at each step in the process is critical to ensure the wastewater is being properly treated and the plant is running correctly. City team members perform numerous tests, including phosphorus, nitrogen, pH, dissolved oxygen, solids, heavy metals, organic content, and much more. We also monitor the type and overall health of the microorganisms used in the treatment process. Each piece of equipment and important information are monitored and adjusted through a robust computer hardware and software operating system. The entire plant can be operated by a single staff member, but a team of 30 is needed to keep the plant running. The team is made up of operators, mechanics, electricians, environmental specialists, engineers, chemists, equipment operators, building maintenance, and administration staff. So thank you for visiting us at the City of Rochester's Water Reclamation Plant. We hope you enjoyed learning how the Water Reclamation Plant turns wastewater into clean water, energy, and fertilizer. Our team is grateful for your support as we work to protect the health of people and the environment through the very important work of wastewater collection and treatment.